Good morning and welcome to This Week. Country in crisis. A new crackdown in Egypt. Could civil war be next for this key U.S. ally? Is there anything America can do to stop it? We're on the ground with breaking details. Republican family feud. Welcome to politics. It's a tough business. Politico calls this the GOP's eve of destruction. This morning, the party chair is here. And the uproar over stop and frisk. Have police gone too far, or is it keeping cities safe? New York's top cop weighs in. Plus, the powerhouse roundtable on all the week's politics, right here this Sunday morning. From ABC News, This Week with George Stephanopoulos starts now. Good morning. We have brand new developments right now from Egypt. After a week of violence that has killed hundreds, injured thousands, the military government now considering a dramatic move, outlawing the Muslim Brotherhood. But with Brotherhood supporters vowing to keep their protests going, this could push Egypt right to the edge of civil war. ABC's Mohammed Leela is in Cairo with all the latest. Good morning, Mohammed. Good morning, George. The mood here on the streets is very tense. There are police, there are soldiers, there are armored personnel carriers on nearly every major street as this city braces for at least nine more protest marches set to begin within the next hour. Now, despite the recent very bloody crackdown, the Muslim Brotherhood is showing its defiance, showing and proving in many recent cases that they are willing to fight to the death if it means bringing back their ousted president, Mohamed Morsi. So, Mohamed, is there any sign that either side is looking to back away from this precipice and negotiate a solution? Well, George, that's a very good question, and this is where it gets very dangerous. Both sides see this as an existential conflict. In other words, they see themselves as fighting for their very survival. The government and the military say they are now fighting terrorists, Islamic extremists who are hell-bent on bringing this country to its knees. The Muslim Brotherhood, for its part, says they are still the legitimate representatives of the people of this country because they won the last election, albeit by a very slim majority. So both sides don't seem to have any middle ground, and many are predicting here that things will get far worse before they get better, if they even get better at all. Okay, Mohammed, thanks very much. I'm joined now by ABC's Chief Global Affairs Correspondent Martha Raddatz. And Martha, this has been this crisis unfolding for months, and it's been kind of a case study in U.S. impotence. When the Brotherhood is in, the United States tries to press them to open up. They don't. The military comes in. The president condemns the crackdown. That makes no difference either. We seem to have absolutely no leverage in Egypt. We have seen no change. Everything the U.S. asks for, nothing happens. And that's what's happened over the last few weeks. Military to military, they're trying to influence them, back off, don't go into those camps. They go in and they do it. The president has not taken away, has not made any indication that he'll take away that $1.3 billion in military aid. And I don't think you'll see the president ever try to take that away. They're trying to get a plan together before Congress comes back. What do we do? But right now, there is no plan. There is no leverage except for military equipment. But in the you're future. seeing more calls, Senators McCain and Graham, both saying it's time to suspend aid right now. And if the military continues with this crackdown, won't the U.S. be forced into that position? Well, that's the big question. Where is the red line for the U.S.? Where is it? There was never really a red line in Syria, and you see tens of thousands of people killed. What they've got, they've lost 900 people now here in Egypt. There still seems to be no red line. So we don't know what the U.S. will do next. I've talked to several officials, and they say perhaps repair parts for some of the military equipment, perhaps Apache helicopters. Will that make a difference? They've got all kinds of money coming in from elsewhere.